Douglas Farino to dare tackle one of the universe's most influential men. He breathes vice. He reeks of controversy. Some call him a rhythmic mystery. Others call him a spontaneous giant talk. His mind knows no bounds. Bent on rising his empire. He is a living spawn of steel and tree bark. He is legendary. He is Kendall Streets. Thanks for being on the show, and welcome to here. This is where it goes down. How do you feel? You're welcome. And I feel great. Now, I'm gonna bounce some questions off you. You ready, bro? Lay them on me, my man. So tell me this, bro. How long have you been rocking the keys? If I had to say, like, when I started, I'd probably have to say when I began learning. Alright, so what were your inspirations as a kid and how they followed you throughout your career? My inspirations range from anywhere from Janis Joplin to Jimi Hendrix to Journey to Mozart to Beethoven. It can pretty much be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be piano music either. I like to listen to a lot of techno. You just get a beat that's like... I love that stuff. I think it's good that you have so many inspirations. Well, yeah, thanks. No problem. Anyway, um, <clears throat> parents. Did your parents support mm. your cause? My cause? Not so much. I was actually adopted. You were adopted? I am... That is cold. That is just... If my parents know, did that know, to me, I, I would have been mad. How did you struggle with this? I wasn't adopted on a literal standpoint. I just like to say I'm adopted because my dad isn't cool. He isn't hip to my drive. You know what I mean, right? Man, I don't know what you're talking about, but it seems like you had a lot of struggles. Tell me about your childrenhood. Of course. My childhood consisted of many things. It was a variety of a mixture. And most of that mixture was hanging out with the other kids in my neighborhood, which, by the way, wasn't a good neighborhood. They called it Bel Air or something, or Beverly Hills. It was around there. That's all I know. And all I did was I got together with my friends, and we started a band. I played the piano. My buddy played the guitar. My buddy, great guitar player, didn't get along with my style. So I... Whoop his butt! I did not whoop his butt. Yes, I did. Look at me. He's living in a garbage can. All right, bro. Tell me about the women in your life. You get a lot of action. You get a lot of action that night, brother. I guess. My, my love life is basically a top, you could say. It spins. It spins. I took this one girl to a family picnic. My family was cooking cheeseburgers. I said, what would you like on your cheeseburgers? And she said she was a vegetarian. Oh, like, brother, that hurts. I that hurts. know, I know. All she eats is vegetables. What? Well, I mean, I don't have anything against that, but all we had at the picnic was burgers. So what? Could, all we could give her was the lettuce. The lettuce? And she got really mad at me for not being ready for her vegetarianness. Oh man, your life seems like a real train wreck. A real pit of grud. Now, what kind of style do you perfectionize in? I think most of all, the hard things in my life are what shapes me as a musician. Like, I write a song, and I base it on emotions that I've felt in the past. Like, I felt depressed when I lost my hairbrush in the fifth grade. Ha! So, I, I wrote a song about it. And became a hit, at least in the neighborhood, you know, and I kept on going. I, I got a shovel and I dug right through that crud, you know? It was, it was beautiful. Bro, that is, that is moving. Thank you. Now there's a lot of 
pressure in this business. A lot. You cannot, you cannot bend down and spit some other guys, but you got to get right up in there and get what you need. So when did, when did you get big? When did you get a gig? I want to know. I want to know. Was it in a stadium? Where was it? Where was your first performance? Well, 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 my first performance was with me and my band, Kendall and the Chargers. We sat down at our stadium in our hometown. It was a football stadium. Really? It was huge. Like, pro? Like, all the way there? I'll tell you, it was a very high grade. Uh, they were seniors. It was at my high school. We played in the parking lot. Wait, so you didn't even play in the stadium? Well, no. All the people were walking out. We just played a little tune. You know, we got some stuff thrown at us. We got kicked. Someone broke my microphone stand. I mean, it's a tough business. For a beginner, you really have to have raw intelligence, you know, raw. Like me. Definitely like me. Like, you start out, you're just a raw piece of meat as a musician. And then you grow to something that isn't raw anymore. You change. You get cooked. You are just a work. You just, you keep tunneling and tunneling and you get what you want. You have inspired me. I'm going to write a novel. Let's see what we got in here. Fun. What do you do to get the ladies' attention? What do you do? Do you ride around in Mustangs? You got, you got your new cool band now? What do you do? I find that what impresses ladies the most is physical activity. Not sports. When you play sport... And you excel, and you get all sweaty, and you're like, no! They like it. They like it. That's all I can say. What sport do you play? What do you do? Well, I tend to like to play racquetball. That's my thing. I go down to the local, you know, recreation center. I'm sorry. Ba back it up. What? What? What is racquetball? Well, you have your racket. And you also get your ball. <laughs> okay. You hit the ball against a wall. It bounces back. You can play with a partner. Oh, God. What, what is this? What, what else? Come on. What else? You, you play football or hockey. No. Because you can get hurt doing that, and I'm a musician. I don't want to get hurt. My fans would hate it. It'd be a big fuss. Time to drill into the deep topics. What are your greatest fears as a musician? Basically, I have about two fears. One, rejection. Two, sea creatures. Fresh muffin. Now let's move on. Sure. I hear you got a treat for us today, is that right? Yep. Uh, a song that you've made up? You bet your bottom. Well, let's hear it. All right. All right, let's go. Let her rip. Last week I saw a guy walking down the street. His name was Joe Pesci, of course, and he was very sweet. Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. I said, hey, Joe Pesci. He said, what's up, kid? I said, not much, dude. He said, don't call me dude anymore, Joe Pesci.
Thank you.